Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth. I am a 37 year old attorney living in the DC area with my husband. And uh, my usual intro hits a little bit differently today because yes, I am 37, I am married, I am an attorney, and I bought a good portion of the Peanuts and Wet n Wild collection. So as you can tell, I do have makeup on, but I am filming this after work. So this is just kind of my basic work makeup. Uh, but I thought I would film kind of an unboxing haul portion uh, and then take my makeup off and apply the makeup from this collection. So uh, if that sounds good to you, uh, make sure to subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into it. So this is quite a large collection. I think in total there are like 26 items if I did the math correctly. Uh, and I purchased these items, uh, some from Ulta, some from Amazon. Uh, I don't think either retailer has the entire collection, which is kind of frustrating. And even for the items that each retailer carries, uh, like for Ulta, some seem like they are online only, some you can pick up in store. Uh, there's a good portion that are out of stock. It came to Amazon before Ulta. I think Ulta just launched it on Sunday. It is Wednesday as I'm filming this. Uh, so I purchased items from Ulta on Sunday. Uh, for Amazon, some of the items seem to have quite a significant ship time, like two to four weeks, and um, the prices vary. And I think just shopping on Amazon, you know, any ethical <laughs> compunctions aside, uh, it just seems to be a more frustrating experience generally. Um, but in the description box down below, I will have everything I am mentioning. Uh, and if it is only available on Amazon, I will link to Amazon, but otherwise I'll probably just link to Ulta because I find it just a little bit easier to navigate. And of course you get bonus points and coupons and that kind of thing. Uh, so before I show you what I did pick up, obviously I have the PR kit here. I'll show you what I did not purchase. So there is a root beer all the way lip scrub that retails for $5.99. Uh, there is the Mary Marshmallow Lip Mask, also retails for $5.99. Uh, there's a different shade of the gloss. So there's a December Snowflakes shade that is also $5.99. Uh, there's a different shade of the lipstick that I don't have. The lipstick shade is called Charlie Brown, which is really cute. And there's also on Ulta, there's the What Christmas is All About three-piece multi-stick set. That is $12.99. There's the Snow Much Fun Translucent Loose Setting Powder, $8.99. The Season of Snoopy Four Piece Makeup Brush Set, that is $16.99. Uh, everything is 99 cents. Uh, the Making Faces Bright Face Soap and Scrubber Set, that is $8.99. Uh, I thought that was really cute, but I just didn't think I needed it. Uh, and there are four nail polish shades that I did not pick up, um, and those are in a variety of shades for $4.99, and then also a different set of nail stickers. So those are $5.99 as well. So that's everything in a nutshell that I did not pick up. So I focused on what I found kind of the most enticing, obviously, and there are some things I just didn't think I would get a lot of use out of, and they just weren't that cute, so. I didn't pick them up. Uh, but as far as what I did pick up, so I got the PR box and I purchased it from Ulta. Um, so it was shipped in like an outer Ulta box, but this is what the actual PR box looks like. And this retails for $69.99. Uh, I calculated the value of all the items inside based on what they retail for separately and I think it has a value of $93.89. Uh, I don't think it says that on the listing, but that was my calculation. And uh, I was also able to use a 20% off coupon, and I think I got four times the points maybe. So it kind of softened the blow. Uh, but I think compared to like the SpongeBob PR kit, which I picked up last year or the year before, and the Lilo and Stitch PR kit from what I recall seeing, those kind of included everything, uh, but because I think this collection is so large, you're only kind of getting a sampling of what is available. So I'll show you the items I thought were worthy of picking up um, by themselves. But anyway, um, this is the PR box, which I thought was just really cute by itself. Obviously you have Snoopy and Woodstock there. 
and you just have the kind of Christmas light design and it has like ingredients and stuff on the back. Uh, and What Wild, by the way, is a cruelty-free um, company. Uh, it also has where things are made and that kind of thing. Okay, so opening this up, very cute interior. I mean, the box itself, the construction is not anything special, but I think they did a good job with the design. Um, so it says, ho, 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 he, he, he. Peanuts by Wet n Wild. Celebrate the gift of giving with Peanuts by Wet n Wild. Snoopy and the Peanuts gang bring you festive cheer in eye, cheek, and lip colors, convenient skincare, and accessories for face and nails that will make you ha, 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 and he, he, he with Christmas glee. And then we have all the Peanuts gang there. So um, the way they have this set up, um, there's basically a couple of plastic trays. Um, so this is the first tray here, and I was definitely relieved to see that the eyeshadow palette seems to have survived intact. Um, I've actually thought about picking up the eyeshadow palette separately because um, there's some embossing on some of the shades that I don't really want to mess up, but um, this is the Merry Christmas Charlie Brown palette for eyes and face. This retails for $16.99 by itself. And um, I thought it was interesting. So this looks like it is a 15 pan palette. And I'm guessing there are, yeah, it says on the back here, there are some shades not intended for use around the eyes. You can see the little asterisk there um, where it says face pigment. Let's see if I can do this. So I think that, unfortunately, they don't have the shades on the front. Um, I should really open this, shouldn't I? Uh, and this is, I think, just kind of packaged the way it would normally be if you were to purchase it separately because, like with drugstore makeup, you tend to get more like stickers on things to keep it shut as opposed to boxes. So I just took my little X-Acto knife. So I don't plan on swatching this palette, but I do plan to use it on the eyes. So I'll do a kind of full face with everything. Yeah, I do kind of wish they had separated out a batch that didn't have stickers. Two hours later. Okay, so I finally got it open. That was really, really frustrating. Um, one reason why I don't love drugstore packaging, but um, I don't know if you can tell, it has that plastic kind of clasp on the front. So my usual trick of just trying to um, slice it open, it wasn't really working. So I kind of grabbed a pair of tweezers and pulled off um, that bottom portion. Um, anyway, not the prettiest, but let's take a look at um, these shades now that we can see them. So Pantophobia, um, Peppermint Patty is the green, Need Sugar is the white, Aluminum tree, and then first prize is the red with a Snoopy embossing. Uh, we have he 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 is that gold, blockhead, Snoopy kisses is the glitter, Christmas queen is the blue, um, ice skating is the light blue, and then Charlie Brown is the dark uh, brown matte with the Charlie Brown embossing. Uh, good grief, um, I think that is supposed to be uh, Lucy. Uh, paint it pink, uh, twinkling lights, and ugh. <laughs> uh, and I think that is, I think that's supposed to be Snoopy. Maybe that's just a present, actually. Couldn't tell if it was Snoopy on top of his house or if it was just a present. Um, and again, let's grab, let's grab an eye brush here. The, let's see, this shade, the purple shade, the red shade, the brown brownish color, which is surprising, the glitter, Snoopy Kisses, this blue, and then also the dark blue, the pink, and the twinkling lights um, are deemed not for use around the eyes. Um, some of these, like the red shade, is because they are using vegan pigments that haven't been approved by the FDA for use on the eyes, and because they are marketing it to um, a US audience, they have to make that disclaimer. Uh, so you can kind of take that into account, especially for the mattes and make your own decision. You know, the glitters maybe just be a little bit more careful with around the eyes, but the other colors I think is just due to the pigments and not necessarily like the texture of the shadow. Okay, so that is the palette. And again, I will use that later. Um, I also have the Good Grief Proof 
um, waterproof eyeliner, which is really cute. I think this is $8.99. Um, it's supposed to last, it says 16 hours. Having more problems with packaging tonight. Okay, so that is what the actual component looks like, just kind of your standard plastic, it looks like. Um, but it does have the cute, like, Snoopy design. And we'll just take a quick, very fine tip. I don't know if I've ever tried this um, eyeliner from Wet n Wild. And it does look like it is a brush tip. So... So far, so good. I mean, it's not like immediately transferring into any fine lines or anything like that on the hand. Okay, so that is the eyeliner. Uh, we also have the gift of giving, what is this, face quad. Um, so it looks like this has actually like a plastic protector on it. And this has the same type of um, closure, it looks like, as the eyeshadow palette. So I'll try to learn from my lesson and I'm just taking a pair of tweezers and try to peel that off. All right. So this has, it looks like two blushes and two highlighters. And oh, unfortunately, you know, it does have a bit of sticky residue on there, which, you know, it's, it's drugstore. It's wet and wild. I'd have to say that on the whole, the items were slightly more expensive than I was expecting. You know, with Ulta at least, I feel like they always kind of increase or inflate their drugstore prices because I think they know that you're gonna use coupons. Um, it seems that like Target generally has less expensive prices. And I think ultimately this collection will be at more locations than just Ulta and Amazon, but those were the um, kind of initial launches. So, um, really cute embossing on this one as well. We have Snoopy and Woodstock. I think the gold highlighter shade is called It's Golden Retrievers. And then this one is Christmas Cookie. And the light highlighter, the white one, is Icy Glow. And then we have Smack is the like candy cane type blush. Luckily for me, I think the two shades that will suit me the best are the ones where um, the embossing isn't quite as special. Uh, it says, Glam the Holidays with Snoopy, featuring two smoothie, two smoothly pigmented blushes and two radiantly strobing highlighters. This face quad allows you to mix and match for a lifted and joyful look. It also says, not for use around the eyes. Um, this one was made in Mexico um, and it does have talc. Uh, this was made in China, by the way. And the eyeliner was also made in China. Okay, so this, like I said, is a very large collection. All right, and then we have one lipstick. So thankfully this is the shade I think will suit me um, the best. I'm not quite sure how all this is going to look together, so we'll see. Um, but this is the Fa La La lipstick in the shade, um, they make this really hard to see. I think it's Santa Snoopy. This one actually looks like it's kind of a metallic formula. Yeah, there's definitely some sparkle, so that's kind of fun. You know, if you were to buy both of them, I guess you could distinguish them easily that way. And it seems like the label or whatever is printed on as opposed to it being a sticker, which is not true of the nail polish, as we'll see. Um, so I think that retails for $5.99. Um, and then there's also the lip gloss this one isn't shrink wrapped neither of these ones are so i'm not sure if the items that are sold separately will have shrink wrap on them i think they usually do um, but this i think is in the shade christmas pageant and this is five dollars and 99 cents as well um, and i'll go ahead and swatch this that's a very interesting like curved applicator Ooh, i think i think that's supposed to be peppermint <laughs> Yeah, not, not really my favorite, but anyway, that is the lip gloss. Um, so that is it for the initial tray here. And then I think there's just one more tray at the bottom. Um, it also did surprise me that there were so many tools, like nail items, um, just different things like that. Um, so we have, oh, this is interesting. So um, this is just kind of laying on top. There's like a cavity down there. I don't know if they were just repurposing some kind of packaging. Uh, but this is the Trim the Trees um, three-piece nail file set, uh, which is kind of cute how it has different shapes up the top. I don't 
typically use this type of nail file all that often, but that is, I think $5.99 based on what I was able to tell on Amazon. Uh, we have the nail stickers. These ones are the Ho Ho Ho. So lots of cute designs there. I really like how they made Snoopy's doghouse into like a gingerbread house. And we have um, Snoopy and like, I guess three little like Woodstock type creatures following him. So anyway, really cute. And again, we'll talk about the nail polish in a moment. And there's also a pair of tweezers if you wanted to have some kind of long-term Snoopy uh, merchandise here. Um, this is the Snoopy Claws tweezer set, $8.99. Um, and it looks like there is one that is a little bit more pointed. Yeah, these are cute. I didn't really have a need for them, but they're cute. Uh, we have the eyelash curler, and I think I do have the like regular Wet n Wild eyelash curler because it was on a best of list, but I think I've only tried it a couple times maybe. Um, this one is really cute because it has a little like Snoopy accessory. This one was, I think, $5.99, which seems like a pretty um, decent price. The thing about having a collection this large is that even if you're kind of a diehard fan of something, I just feel like it makes it a little bit harder to try to collect everything. Like it almost forces you to kind of um, pick and choose. I kind of feel that way with the new Glamlight uh, Snoopy collection because they have two palettes and it's like, well, I definitely like one color story better than the other, so I might as well just get the one color story that I like instead of getting both, you know what I mean? Um, and this is removable. It's just on like one of those little like dog chain type um, attachments. So um, I will definitely be using this later. Calling it Holiday Hugs is very cute. There's one item that just, you know, kind of got me in the feels, which we'll talk about in a moment. And this also has the um, little sponge duo. I don't really want to use these, but I think I might at least show you what they look like damp. I'm not sure if I'll use them with makeup, but um, yeah, we have like a Santa Snoopy and a little Woodstock. Very cute. That's $8.99. And I think what everyone kind of lashed onto, um, Wet n Wild is so good now about doing these like really cute little sponge cases. So this one is $8.99 by itself as well. Um, and I think this one is in stock at Ulta. So um, it shouldn't be too difficult to get your hands on it if you are so inclined. Um, but yeah, this has um, like it's two pieces and it has holes on the bottom as well. Little kind of um, feet there to keep it a little bit raised. Um, and you would just pop this on. I mean, it's silicone, so it's kind of a little difficult, but isn't that cute? On the back it says, um, you can tell it says peanuts by wet and wild very very cute um, and i did see pictures of you know these sponges being inside this so this should accommodate um both of them so yeah so really really cute okay so as far as the other items i did pick up i'll save my favorite for last i think um so i also got um like i mentioned the nail polish in best is snow so it's just like a white cream um and this one you can tell is with a sticker on it. So not as nice as the others. Um, and obviously it's not on my nails now, but I thought, you know, when I go off camera, I might apply um, some to this little nail wheel so you can maybe see like one coat, two coat, three coat, because, you know, white creams can be kind of difficult sometimes to get a nice even coat. So um, yeah, not, not my favorite, but I wanted to pick up at least one of the nail polishes. Uh, and then I also picked up the Tinsel Shine Lip Oil. Um, I thought based on the pictures, it would be kind of sparkly, but it looks like it's kind of just clear. This one looks like it is um, shrink wrapped. Like I mentioned, the other ones probably would be by themselves. Um, so let's try and get into this. Okay, so I'm guessing this one is gonna be peppermint. Yeah. Same peppermint, and it looks like that's just going to be kind of a clear oil. So I would say you can probably skip on this um, if you don't want like just a normal lip oil. Packaging is really cute though. I think this one might be a sticker, but the sticker seems to be better applied than the nail polish. I don't feel a sticker on the gloss, but I could be wrong. 
Interesting. Okay, so I got the lip oil and I also got from Ulta, you know, they put things inside of different bags um, and they taped it. This is the Shake It Like a Snow Globe Illuminating Face Mist. I think it's meant to have some kind of, you know, iridescence or something to it. You can tell I did a lot of hardcore um, research here. I don't think it, it doesn't smell like anything, I don't think. Pretty um, fine mist, so um, I will use that as well. Um, and then next to last here, I got the makeup bag and it just came in a little plastic bag like so. I feel like I forgot to tell you some of these prices. So the lip oil was $5.99. This was $10.99, which, you know, seems like it's kind of a lot. Uh, the nail polish is $4.99. Um, this makeup bag is $16.99. And um, I wasn't aware at first, I don't think, that um, it actually has like a different image on the back. So this is like a canvas that says um, Peanuts by Wet n Wild and it has Snoopy. And obviously we have kind of the clear interior with just like a normal silver zipper. And it has kind of a faux like Saffiano leather type texture to it. That's about the size there. So um, you could probably fit a good amount in here. Like the palette will fit, which you know, <laughs> you would think they would account for that. Yeah, and I like that they have different designs on the palette in the bag as well. So my possibly favorite item, which I think some people might find kind of silly, but the thing that just kind of got me in the feels um, was this um, Peanuts by Wet n Wild Linus's Blanket <laughs> two-piece makeup remover towel. So um, this was $8.99. So I don't know. I just, I love it when things are a little meta, I guess. And so um, the fact that they took a towel and made it into a makeup towel, um, I just thought was super adorable. Um, and I think this is basically supposed to work like a makeup eraser, if I can get it open. Yeah, it says Linus's iconic blue blanket is now an ultra plush makeup removing towel. Cozy up to this super soft, deep cleansing cloth that will remove makeup and debris. Can be used with water or your favorite cleanser. Um, I'm trying to open this without tearing it. Normally I don't rely on a makeup eraser to actually remove my makeup. I just Oh, there we go. I just use it for swatches and that kind of thing. Um, so there's two in here and I'm not sure whether they're the same or not. Uh, but I thought I might try to demo one. Oh, these are pretty small really. It has the little peanuts label. And okay, so they're two, yeah, they're two slightly different designs. If you can see that one has like a Snoopy laying on his back and one has like a Snoopy laying on his front. Um, it's interesting that they sewed the label in on the side with a design as opposed to on the back. Okay, so I am going to, um, are these slightly different sizes? I'm not sure if that was intentional or if that was just a quality control issue. I mean, not by much. All right, so I am going to um, wet one of these and I'll start to remove my makeup on camera so you can see it, but um, I'll go off and kind of actually remove my makeup and I guess I'll be back on with a bare face, possibly. So one moment. I think the makeup eraser instructions tell you to wash it before you use it to like prevent staining. I don't see that disclaimer on here. So I'll just go ahead and I guess go in. So um, I'm just using that side and I had pretty light makeup on today obviously. I mean, it does, it takes off makeup like you would expect, but I don't feel like, you know, this is going to get my face perfectly clean. So, um, I always, like I said, go in with a double cleanse. All right. And just, I guess, to see kind of how things work on the hand with the eyeliner, it's a waterproof eyeliner and lip gloss and red lipstick. So that is truly waterproof. It, 
Is it waterproof though? If you can just take it off with a wet towel? I don't know. Okay. So yeah, I think, you know, it does, I think what it's supposed to do. So uh, like I said, I'll, I'll take off the rest of my makeup with actual cleansing balm. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be it for, I guess, the first part of this video. Uh, so I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so uh, it is actually the next day. Uh, so if you think I look a little bit different, uh, you're not imagining things. Um, I did shower uh, earlier today, so my hair um, is down. It's still maybe a little damp, but uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and get into the demo. So a couple things I wanted to update you on. Uh, I did do the three swatches of the nail polish as I discussed. So um, the one towards the top is one coat and then two coats and three coats. And as you can tell, it is a pretty matte finish, which is what I think helps it uh, dry so quickly. Um, I didn't test really the, the 40 second claim or anything uh, before going in with another coat, but um, it seemed to dry pretty quickly. And as I said, it is kind of a matte finish, but because they've included nail stickers, you'll probably want to uh, go in with a top coat anyway to kind of lock it in. Uh, so yeah, I think for like a cream white polish, you know, generally it does take more than one coat to kind of get it to full opacity. Um, I don't think the single coat is necessarily bad, but um, I think it does definitely look better at three coats, uh, even then it's not absolutely perfect, but um, I think it's pretty good anyway. And just to show you the brush, because I don't think I did that yesterday, uh, it does have the kind of brush that I personally really like, um, which is the kind of flatter wide brush with a kind of uh, rounded tip. Um, so I did really enjoy the process of applying it to this little uh, nail wheel anyway. So that was the nail polish. And then um, I did go ahead and use Goo Gone on um, the edge of this blush palette uh, because adhesive on packaging just annoys me. Uh, I did try to use like an alcohol wipe and that it might have worked eventually, but it felt like it was taking a while. So I went ahead and used the Goo Gone. Um, if you want to do something similar, I would definitely recommend trying to keep the area that you're using the Goo Gone on kind of separate from the actual powder makeup because obviously you don't want to get Goo Gone into your makeup. So what I like to do is I'll spray some of the Goo Gone onto a paper towel and then rub um, where the adhesive is. And then, you know, after I've kind of wiped it off, I think I then went in with like the alcohol wipe just to make sure everything um, was removed. Uh, so that was it for the blush palette. Uh, I also wanted to kind of give you a better close up of the tweezers. So these are kind of, I guess, your standard size larger tweezers. And it looks like they have the Peanuts and Wet n Wild logo on one side, and then the other is the design. Same with this one. And the pointier one is the Woodstock, the kind of traditional slanted tip or whatever is the Snoopy. Um, a couple things I just wanted to note. Again, I'm, I'm pretty loyal to my Tweezermans. Um, these feel fine. Um, I don't know if I have anything in need of tweezing at the moment, uh, but I think, you know, these will do as well as kind of any other generic tweezer. So I have a couple of mini Tweezermans here. And then I think what I actually used yesterday to open the packaging is, I think the standard size. These are, it looks like a little bit longer. And they do have like a wider tip. But what I found interesting was um, these Tweezermans that came in this little set of minis, these come to like a very fine point to where I don't actually really ever reach for these because I just find that it's too fine a point to actually grab onto any hair. Um, these ones actually, they look like they're slightly rounded at the tip. Um, so I feel like those might actually have the potential to grab onto a hair if that's what you're trying to use tweezers for. Yeah, I don't know if they're more rounded as kind of a safety thing um, or if Tweezerman is just a better um, tweezer, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, that's my two cents on the tweezers. Uh, and then as we're kind of getting into the actual makeup application, um, I do want to apply the lip oil, um, which is the peppermint lip oil. Not my favorite scent for lip products, but 
Yeah, I think these do have peppermint oil in them. I don't think this product is marketed as being like a plumping lip oil or anything like that. So anyway, just kind of a general um, lip oil. I can see this being nice for like a tween or something if you wanted to give them something from this collection that you know you felt comfortable with them using. Um, this is just a clear um, lip oil essentially. Um, and then I thought I would go ahead and spray this and now that it's kind of settled down, um, you can see that all the mica or whatever it is is at the bottom. Um, so if I shake it, um, again, that is what it looks like. I wasn't sure if I liked that the name of the product was, you know, basically the instruction for use, but. Yeah, and it, it does have a scent to it, but it's not like peppermint. I don't know what it is. It's almost a little fruity. So I just tried to spray like this half of my face so you could maybe see if there was a difference. Doesn't look like there's much of one. I kind of just got it for the novelty factor. I'm not hugely into um, sprays and that sort of thing, but I wanted to um, try it out with this collection, especially if I wanted to apply any kind of spray after makeup. And for the sponges, again, I really don't want to use the sponges because I just feel like there's no way to get them 100% clean after use, um, but I will wet them. So I'll compare them to my kind of normal beauty blender here. Uh, and I thought I would also go ahead and put <laughs> Put Snoopy in the doghouse. Uh, so the full size, ooh, okay, so this has a slanted side. I didn't realize that. Um, so that is the comparison dry. I think the Beauty Blender is slightly taller and skinnier, and of course that has the slanted side to it. Um, and then little Woodstock is also slanted on one side. Um, so let me go wet these and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the after. I think I might have been holding them this way, maybe. Um, so hopefully, hopefully I got a good like kind of before and after shot for you. It does take a minute to kind of expand, but then it really does. Um, and that is, again, the difference between the uh, Wet n Wild and the Beauty Blender in terms of size. Okay, so let's see. I'm not sure exactly how they had this, but I think, you know, the idea is put Snoopy in there and I guess you can almost use the the slants to Okay. <laughs> you can see Snoopy in there. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, proof of concept it works. Uh but as I said, I I just don't I don't want to use it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm sure it works just fine. Uh, one other, I guess, quick thing I can show you. Oops, I'm dropping Woodstock. I'll just compare the kind of Snoopy sponge, I guess. Um, so as far as, yeah, I guess, again, a little bit more resistance than the Beauty Blender. If that is something um, you are interested in knowing. And I do have the, like, the Pro version of the Beauty Blender, which just means it's black, but it's still available at, I think, most of the places that you can find a Beauty Blender. Okay, so I did apply the spray, but I think I'm going to go in with just a little bit more of a primer here. I've been enjoying the Glossier Future Dew again. So I think all the other complexion products I'm going to be using are not from this collection, so uh, I think I might just hop off camera um, and spare us all the extra time and watching me apply makeup. Uh, but I will have everything I use um, in the description box down below. But I just wanted to let you know that any extra kind of, I guess, dewiness or luminosity are from um, the Glossier product and not the illuminating face mist. All right, so I'll be back in a few. Okay, so we're back. So um, just to kind of talk about, I guess, whatever I think is relevant here, um, I went in with the Makeup Forever Reboot, which I haven't reached for in a while. And again, it's an excellent foundation if you haven't tried it. Uh, and then I also did use some contour. I used both the KBD uh, gel contour in Fair 90. Um, I used that on the cheeks uh, and then underneath the jaw. And I also used some of the Fenty um, contour on the nose. And I also used the um, Gucci bronzer, which um, I'm sorry isn't more affordable given the 
I guess overall focus of this video, but it's a really great tone um, for my complexion. So I just wanted to let you know that because we're kind of working backwards in a way because um, I have kind of more limited options for um, the lips and the cheeks and then the eyes I think are gonna kind of follow those in terms of the shades that I use. Okay, so to go in with the blush and highlighter, uh, I'm going to use the pink shade. Um, so that is what they look like on the fingers. This could possibly serve as a bronzer shade depending on your skin tone. I could possibly go in with that, but I don't know if you can tell, there's a decent amount of sparkle in that pink blush and the highlighter also is pretty glittery, I would say. Anyway, we're just having fun here, right? All right, so I'm going to try that pink blush with a refer number five and I always like to kind of start off slow with a blush and build. Yeah, I mean, if you if you really get in there, you can kind of see the sparkle. Let's zoom you guys in. Yeah, I think you can see that. <laughs> so I don't know that this is going to be like your everyday palette. Let's see how the other cheek does. Okay, so that is the pink blush. I might just leave it there, keep it a little bit more subtle and then decide at the end if I wanna add any more. Uh, and then going in with this highlighter shade on this Anastasia A23. Again, like I think this is gonna be kind of straight up glitter. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there isn't a lot of kind of like underlying pigment there. Get hair stuck in it. <laughs> Just adding more sparkle to the cheek. So, I mean, it's the holidays. Again, like if you have a child who wants to have a little bit of fun, you know, this might be something they like playing around with, but I think if you wanna use this as like serious makeup, I don't know that I would recommend this particular palette. Um, just going in slightly more with the blush. We want that uh, Aspen cheek, Fjord's cheek, whatever your preferred analogy is. Make it look like we were running outside in the cold. Yeah, I mean, the, I think the blush is okay. I mean, it did have a slight bit of glitter in it, but the highlighter is just not, not my favorite. So I don't know, I'd say that is probably a pass. Um, some of the other products I've tried, like, Again, like they just didn't wow me with their cute factor. Like the tweezers, like they're fine, but you know, it's not something I probably would have picked up um, separately. Okay, so going in with the eyeshadow palette, I always prime my lids. So I'm using the Fenty primer. And then personally, I like to also set the primer just with some kind of, usually it's a face powder, but sometimes I just use a matte shadow. Uh, there isn't a shadow in this palette that's, I guess, close enough to my complexion. So I just go in here with the same powder I used to set underneath my eyes and that sort of thing. All right, so time for this guy. So I've spent a bit of time kind of thinking about um, what I wanted to do here. And I think, unfortunately, the shades that have the arguably cutest embossing, so we have the Charlie Brown and the Woodstock, like those are kind of the, the shades you're more likely to use to kind of round out a look. Um, so let's just go ahead and start I'm gonna use a little Sonia G brush and go into that 
Woodstock shade, unfortunately, um, because it is what I think will set this off. Um, so just to kind of, I guess, give you an idea of where I think I'm going, uh, I think I wanna use some of the blues and maybe some of the pink. I think I'm gonna try and kind of go with a more cool toned look um, to complement the cheek color and the lips. Um, otherwise, I think, you know, you could get a pretty wearable look just with using like that shade, that shade, and that shade probably as being pretty neutral. Um, this white shade is pretty icy. Again, I'm not sure how much like underlying pigment that has. So that might be a shade that's kind of best tapped on. Has a bit of iridescence to it. Um, so I'm going to use, I think this Woodstock shade in the crease to kind of set things off. Um, and I'm just trying to go around the embossing. So I kind of try to preserve, preserve what I can. Yeah, I don't think this size of brush was necessary for this shade. Again, on my skin tone, it's a pretty good just um, transition. So I'm gonna go in with a larger brush. I mean, the embossing, it's not completely vanishing, so that's good. If you have a darker complexion than mine, you could probably use this kind of shade to set the lid. Or um, if you're deeper than that even, you could probably use this to possibly highlight the brow bone. It's kind of a matte highlight. Okay, so we're starting to kind of add some dimension. I do set my under eyes, but I find that taking a little bit of a kind of transition color like this and running it underneath helps to prevent some creasing. And it also, like you can see, probably a tiny bit of creasing there. And it also adds dimension to the eye look. So we're not going for subtle today. Okay, and then I think I'm just gonna go into that. I'm just gonna call it the Lucy shade, that kind of matte dark blue, and go back for my mini booster and see kind of how we go with this. Yeah, I'd say these shadows are generally a little bit more forgiving than perhaps the pigment you would expect from, I don't know, a Pat McGrath type formula, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially if you're less confident with makeup. So I'm just trying to get a kind of general shape here and then I'll go over it um, and blend. I know it looks scary now. So yeah, it comes off, I guess, less intensely navy and more, I don't know how you would describe this color. Um, so I'm going in with a blending brush. This is the Mac 224, I believe. Um, and picked up a little bit of that Woodstock shade again. So you can see that blended it out quite a bit. And I'm just kind of touching up a little bit where I think I need to kind of even out the pigment. So I'm going to leave it there for now. And I'm going to take the deeper blue metallic there at first, just to see kind of how this does. Um, so this is a dry synthetic brush. And normally if I were doing a look kind of this dramatic, I would go in with my eyeshadow first to avoid fallout, but that's okay. Okay, so I think that applied decently well with a dry brush. Going about halfway in and then I will um, blend. So I'll try wetting the brush with the same mist. This does have a nice mist to it. I'll give them that. All right, so going in with the same shade wet. I guess I'll start off with this eye. 
yeah, you can see that definitely amps up the color payoff. So I'll try to perfect things a little bit more with the blend and everything. It's a little bit of a challenge doing this with a very small mirror. All right, and then I'm going to take a different brush here. Same style of brush, but this one is clean. Uh, and then I guess I'll go ahead and use this one dry as well. So I'm going into that light blue metallic next to it. So not super pigmented. Do get a bit more payoff with a damp brush. So just kind of trying to blend that transition a little bit. Personally, I don't mind it when my kind of shimmer shade goes into the crease a little bit. Um, hmm. I think what I'm gonna do next is, what is this shade? Peppermint Patty? It's kind of a green, is that duochrome? Not really. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my finger into this white shade that I swatched and kind of tap that over, focusing a little bit more on the inner corner, going for kind of an ice queen look here. Yeah, I think that adds a little bit more life to the look. I think using your finger, it can, can cause some fallout because you're kind of picking up more product. Again, just trying to kind of even things out a little bit. And then taking a rougher, uh, what is this, 26, and going to that same white shade. <laughs> it's almost like snow. So I think what I want to do now, which isn't something I typically do, um, I'm gonna take that pink shade and put it on the lower lash line. I'm trying to use kind of as many colors as I can here. I think the trick with colors like this and with the red shade as well is to make them look intentional and not like you're sick. I'm not sure this really achieves that. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of blue on the outer corner and try to blend. Then using that same white shade, just taking it a little bit further. Okay, I think, I think that's something I can live with. This white shade is kind of saving the day. All right, and you know, once I get mascara and everything on and liner it'll look a little bit you know more sane so before i do liner um i'll go ahead and swatch some of the other kind of metallic shades that you might be interested in um so we already have the white and the peppermint patty there's this purple shade this gold uh this other gold i'm not sure that we needed both of those i mean one is more of a yellow gold um, and I use the blues and the pinks, and then I will um, swatch the glitters as well. So I know it says Merry Christmas on it, so if you celebrate Hanukkah, I don't know if, you know, this would do it for you, but um, it does have a good amount of, like, blue in it, so you could use it for that purpose if you wanted to have more of a Hanukkah um, colored look. All right, and swatching the glitters, I didn't want to use these for the reasons I mentioned. And the last time I did a One Wild review, it was that Cherry Blossom um, collection. I mean, they're very beautiful. So if you are feeling brave, maybe go in with a really strong glitter glue to make sure that it's kind of holding on to that, that glitter. Go ahead and swatch the blue other blue which is not not doing the most and then the pink um so is that everything basically purple green 
white. So those were all the fun shades. And again, the glitters are a lot of fun. Um, that other gold, I think it's called Aluminum Tree. Um, this one right there. Um, that one doesn't have any kind of restrictions on it, but it is kind of very nice and pretty and reflective. So um, if you wanted to play it safe, I think that is a shade you could have a lot of fun with. Okay, let's, let's do some liner. Okay, so I'm going to spare you um, watching me apply uh, liquid eyeliner. Um, as I've said before, I don't profess to be any kind of expert in liner application. I thought I saw a speck there. So I'll hop off camera. Um, I already showed you kind of the close up and everything like that. So let's see how I do with the little wing that I plan to do. Okay, so not not terrible, if I say so myself, a little uneven perhaps, but I think that's good enough. <laughs> um, you know, if I were to offer any advice, like I said, not being the expert or anything on this particular type of product, but my advice um, is to try and like ground your arms as best you can so that they're not kind of floating in midair. Um, same thing with like painting your nails or whatever, like if you give yourself a little bit more um, support to kind of steady yourself then um, it typically results in a better application. Um, so I'm just going to go in with my little Clinique bottom lash and then let's go in for the lash curlers. All right so like I said they have the little kind of snoopy like silicone type thing on here which is really cute. You can remove that uh, and then I'll just use my um, good old Heart lights camera splashes and okay this is a slightly different angle than I'm used to I'm not sure why it kind of goes up in the center uh, and then I like to apply kind of the first coat of mascara after curling them to kind of Help lock it in place. I feel like this dramatic an eye look really calls for lashes. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't release any as part of this collection. I think Wet n Wild makes lashes. It would certainly make sense with the uh, tweezers to have lashes because people often use tweezers to apply lashes. Uh, and then going in for the second coat, this is what really kind of builds the volume. And of course the liner is so dramatic. I don't even know if you can see my lashes all that well. <laughs> like I said, like they're a little hard to see. Maybe if I turn my head, you can kind of see maybe the curl. And my lashes for reference are very like straight pointed down. Um, so I thought I would just quickly compare the Wet n Wild lash curler to some others in my collection. Um, from what I can tell using it, it has a sharper bend. Um, so some of the like kind of Japanese curlers, hopefully you can see there that the Wet n Wild um, lash curler has a much, is much more curved. Um, the wrapper one underneath it is flatter. So Japanese lash curlers, I think tend to be a little bit flatter. That's the Surratt one underneath. I think the refer one is flatter than the Surratt. Yeah, but I think this Wet n Wild definitely has more of a curve to it. And again, like I just use this for the first time. So if you have a different eye shape or if you're used to something else, it may work out better for you. Um, but if you're used to this style of lash curler, I'm pretty sure I've used the Kevin Kwan ones, um, the Shuamura ones that used to be really popular. Um, so if you're used to one kind of like this one, this Wet n Wild one might take a bit of adjustment. I have found that these work well for my eye shape, which is more hooded, um, and my eyes are a little bit more deep set, but uh, you may have a different preference. So let's go ahead and wrap up with the lipstick and lip gloss. So I'm just gonna go straight in from the bullet without any lip liner, um, just so we get as true a reflection of the color as possible. All right, so again, this does have glitter in it as well. I don't smell anything. 
So normally with a red, I would go in with a lip liner. So it's very red. Um, <laughs> uh, like I said, I, I tried to come up with an eye look I thought would flatter the lipstick. I'm not sure if this does or not. Uh, a little bit is getting on my teeth. Okay, I had to free up space on my memory card. Um, I'm gonna see what this looks like with the lip gloss on top. I think that might help a little bit. All right, I think I'm going to, in the interest of not looking like a clown, I'm gonna wipe off the lips. All right, so I think that might be good enough. And then just take my beauty blender Try to perfect that a bit. Uh, so I wanna see what it looks like just with the lip gloss. I think that's better. A little bit more ice princess, less clowns. Uh, and I think I do need maybe a little bit more concealer. A rogue sparkle down here somewhere. All right, let's zoom out to get the uh, the full effect here. So you know we didn't we didn't hold back with the eyes, like I said, you could probably get, you know, a more everyday look, but you know, I went in for the blue. And I think again, like having lashes would probably make it look a little less severe. I might have to apply some here just for the sake of the thumbnail. All right, so I will be using these tweezers after all. Uh, so these are just, I think some Ardell 110s. They're pretty subtle as far as lashes go. There's a big old glue spot in there that needs to dry. All right, and I'm just gonna take the liner and try to Cover up that little spot there. Okay, I think that's a little bit better anyway. Okay, so um, <laughs> this is the final look. Yeah, I don't I don't wear blue shadow all that often, so it's a little bit of getting used to. I think you know objectively it looks okay. Um, I can't think of an occasion where I would wear this off the top of my head. But um, again, like I think if you have maybe a tween or a teenager that you want to gift this to for them to have fun with, I think, you know, there's certainly a lot of color here, a lot of sparkle. I think if you're an adult and you're just kind of swept up in the cuteness, I think I would err on the side of picking up like the accessories, um, like the little um, cleansing cloths, um, the makeup bag, the um, sponges and the doghouse um, sponge dryer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this little eyelash curler, it's cute. Like if you think this will work for your eye shape, um, it's not too expensive. You know, the nail stickers um, are cute. I don't know that you need to get like specifically the Snoopy white nail polish. You probably have a lot of cream nail polishes already that you could use. So yeah, so I think I would I would err on that side. I think the liquid eyeliner is fine. Again, it's not really my preferred type of eyeliner. So if it is yours, you may like it. Um, like I showed you, it didn't seem to run on the back of my hand or go into any fine lines or anything. Um, I think, you know, the lipstick color could be fun if you're not wearing like a bright blue eyeshadow, you know, just to have something really fun and festive. Texturally, it didn't feel like there was a lot of glitter on my lips, so I did like that about it. I think, you know, the lip oil and the lip gloss, I would 
probably skip based on my preference of not liking peppermint oil in my lip products like I can kind of feel it now and it's not really my favorite you know the tweezers were just okay the face quad I'd probably skip again like you could probably come up with some other eyeshadow looks if you're not trying to use a bunch of different shades so I guess it's just your call on that yeah so I, I think that's everything really in a nutshell that I need to um, address here uh, let me know what you think of this collection uh, like I said you can probably pick and choose a little bit more than I did in terms of um, what you might want to pick up so that's gonna do it again I hope you guys found this video helpful if you did make sure to hit that subscribe button down below uh, I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe and I will talk to you soon bye